Hey guys, my name's Inferno, and today we're going to be talking about I.O. games. I.O. games were all the rage in the late 2010s. Every kid in every school had one of these loaded up while their teacher was talking about... I don't know what they're talking about, I wasn't paying attention. But lately, I.O. games have been on the decline, to the point where some of them are shutting down forever. So let's talk about these games before they become lost relics. For those who don't know, IO games are generally multiplayer competitive online browser games, all with their own gameplay style where you join a server and try and beat the other players, or survive, or win a game. It's a pretty diverse set of games, but they usually do have a lot in common. So, without further ado, let's get into the ranking. First up in the ranking, we got Agario. This is THE IO game. Agario popularized the format, and without it, you wouldn't think of competitive multiplayer online games when you see .io at the end of the link. This game was huge, it was a legit phenomena, it was everywhere on YouTube, everyone was playing it, you would see PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, everyone would play it. It was truly huge, and it spawned a ton of games that sort of used the style of Agario. But what about the actual game? Well, in the game, you're a cell, and you try to get bigger by eating other people. That's the gist of it, and you know, there's a few things you can do, like you can divide yourself and throw half of your body at someone to try and eat them. Also, you got these viruses everywhere. I'd say this game's got enough unique mechanics to have a real strategy to it. It's not just get bigger the game, but it can also get frustrating and there isn't much gameplay variety. You're basically doing the same thing over and over again. That being said, I think this game has to go in at least B tier, just for everything it did for the genre. I mean, none of these games would exist without Agario. Next up on the list is Slitherio. This is the second IO game people think of. It's basically like Snake if you made it more like Agario, where you're a snake and you consume little orbs to get bigger, and you're trying to beat other snakes and take their life essence. And it's pretty intuitive. It makes sense that something like this was the second IO game. I mean, it's pretty much just Snake, but you made it multiplayer and you made it online. Overall, it's fun, but there's less tactics to it. I mean, you can dash, and you can try to encircle other players, but it's just got less to it than Agario, so I'm gonna put it in C tier. Now for Diepio, or Diep.io, I don't know, nobody knows how to pronounce these games. This is gonna be a recurring thing. This is the first game on the list with a lot more depth and complexity. Basically, you're a tank and you gotta shoot shapes to get experience points, and you can use those points to level up, give yourself better stats. And as you level up, you can choose better classes until you reach the final one at level 45. This game's mechanics are really cool, and it did a lot for the genre. This is the IO game that really raised the bar. You can optimize your stats, you can choose different classes, you can experiment with it. There's just a lot more to the gameplay. Despite that, there are some big flaws to this game. One is the grinding needed to get big. Unless you can take down a stronger player, it'll take a while to get to your maximum level. However, reaching that full power is really satisfying. There's also some tank classes that are just really annoying to deal with, and there's some that really suck, so if you choose those, you're shit out of luck. Oh, and the only playable mode is Maze. Every other mode sucks. Play on Maze, please. I need some other people to play with. Overall, this game is really good, but it does have some flaws, so I'm putting it in A tier. Now, let's talk about Paper I.O. This game's quite iconic, and it has a very simple premise. It's Snake, but with territory control. Basically, you try to encircle an area, and then claim it as your own, and you try to conquer as much of a map as you can. It's really quite basic, but you can have fun with it. Now, my initial instinct was to give this game C tier, but there's some interesting extra modes. For example, 3D mode, where instead of conquering territory on a flat map, you're doing it on a 3D map, which adds a lot of intricacy. And here's my live reaction to me discovering another mode in the game. Skibbity toilet? What? <laughs> what the fuck? You did it, Paperio. You won. You're going to B tier. Now, Paperio is fine, but if you want to play a better territorial conquest game, then how about dfly.io? Holy shit, man! I've played this game for like 500 hours. Not actually, but it's definitely my most played game on this whole list. This is how you do a territorial control game. Basically, you're playing as a helicopter and you have to leave little nodes everywhere and link them up to claim territory. This game has the stats upgrading and combat of Dieppe with the territorial control of Paper.io. It's really fun to manage your territory and fight off the other players who try to stop you from conquering the map, and the combat is surprisingly fun. 
There's a few powers you can choose from once you reach a high enough level, like a flashbang, or a super speed, or a teleportation. Now there is one issue with this game, and that's that it's kind of dead. You're not going to find that many players playing at once. The game does kind of try to rectify this by adding a ton of bots, which isn't that bad. I mean, they're still capable of killing you, and they're still building their own territory, so they're kind of like other players, but it's not the same as fighting another player who's really good at the game. However, despite that issue, this game is just really satisfying, especially if you're able to get 100% of the map. I've done that before, it's really cool. I don't think this game is S tier quality, but to me, it's an S tier, so I'm putting it in S tier. Next up we got Hole.io. This is basically a fun little game where you're a hole in the ground and you're trying to eat objects and people and buildings. I love this type of thing, it's really got the same appeal of Katamari Damacy if you've ever played that, but despite being about holes, it's not super deep, so I'm gonna give it B tier. Next up we've got Scribblio, a drawing party game. Basically you try and guess what someone else is drawing, or if you're the drawer, you try and get people to guess what you're drawing. Although this is a solid game, I feel like it really just pales in comparison to so many other things. If you're playing with strangers, this game sucks. If you're playing with friends, just play Gardic Phone or Jackbox, those games are so much better. I'm sorry Scribblio, you're going in D tier. Next up is Survivio. This game is a battle royale similar to Fortnite or PUBG, but it's got its own style going. This game came out while battle royales were huge, I mean every game was trying to be a battle royale, and this game was the IO version of a battle royale. This was another huge game for the IO genre, and it was seen at nearly every school in the country. In terms of the fun I had with it and its impact, it's easily S tier, but over time it declined, and in 2023 it was shut down, and now you can't play it anymore. And this is the first game on the list that this applies to. I'll put this game in S tier for now, but I'll come back to this one. Now those are all the IO games I remembered from playing a long time ago, but there's a lot more out there, so I scoured the internet and found all the functional ones I could and put them on this tier list, so let's get into the next one. Wings.io This is an aerial combat game where you fly around, collect weapons, and use them on other people. It's simple as that, and you get a nice variety of weapons, and you can fight a bunch of other players, and you try and get to the top of the leaderboard. This game is really fast paced and fluid, and it's hard to keep the top spot for long, but that's what makes it really fun. If I just wanted to play an IO game for 10 minutes for some quick action, I'd pick this one. It's really fun, you don't have to invest much time into it, it's just nice. I'm putting this in S tier. Next up is Brutal IO. Damn, brutal. This game feels like a revamped Agario with new awesome mechanics. In this game, instead of feeding and growing yourself, you're feeding your own tail, which just gets bigger and bigger, and you try and whip it around and hit people with it. You can also detach this thing and then attract it back to yourself. These mechanics make for some really fun combat. You can just detach your tail, throw it at other people, or try and detach your tail and then attract it and then make that hit someone else. And unlike Agario, it's actually possible for a small guy to take down a bigger guy with a well-placed shot. With some good tactical moves, you could go from the bottom of the leaderboard to the top really quick. Overall, this is just a great, fun little game. I'm putting it in A tier. Next up is Powerline IO, which I found advertised on Brutal IO. This game is also like Snake, but with some unique mechanics. Getting close to people can boost your speed, and so does collecting energy. This small little change leads to a more fun and dynamic game than something like Slither IO. I also quite like the theming of the game. The visuals and sound design are quite good. I still think it's a bit too shallow to get a B tier, but it's a fun little game. I'd recommend it. Hi C. Next up is Deep IO. Oh, I'm sorry. Deep IO. This game's about evolution. You get this open side-scrolling world of mostly ocean and a bunch of different animals with different characteristics, and you try to collect resources and hunt other players and avoid being hunted. This game is a very fun concept. It's fun to go from animal to animal, changing, and they all have their own mechanics. And the execution is solid. I wouldn't say it's good enough to be S tier, but apparently it's in beta, so maybe it will be one day. I'm putting it in A tier. That's not the only evolution game I found though, next up is Mopio. Unlike Deepio, this game is a top down game instead of a side scroller, and it focuses a lot more on land animals. It's got a lot of the same appeal, you know, you try and collect resources, you try to hunt other players like an animal would. However, to me this one feels a little bit duller in comparison. The content is less developed, and there's a lot of things missing from the game. If this game were improved, I may give it A tier, but as it is, I'll give it a B tier. This F tier is looking a little too empty, so... Here's some shit I found. Tilefall.io Damn, intellectual property theft is this easy? 
They're not even trying, it has Among Us in the name. Yeah, I don't know, man. This game is literally nothing original about it. But wait, what's this? Make tile fall better. Man, they're trying to make this game better. I didn't realize the tile fall devs cared like this. Now I feel like an asshole. Whatever, F tier. All right, enough pussyfooting around with these small little insignificant games. Now let's get to one of the big ones, Krunker. This is one of the most popular IO games, and it still seems to have an active, loyal player base. In research, a lot of people said this was their favorite IO game, so what do I think? Well, first person shooters aren't really my thing. That being said, this game is really well made. It's a first person shooter IO game with many modes for whoever wants that. But I can't shake the feeling that this is just Call of Duty at home, like, who's playing this if you got Call of Duty? It's kind of bland and basic, but I get the appeal. It's a fine game, so I'm gonna put it in B tier. However, there's another first person shooter I found called Evio. This game's much less of a basic FPS and it actually has a lot of flavor to it. You can teleport around, pick up different guns, you get a ton of items like throwable grenades, you get a thing you can throw on the ground and it blasts you across the map. I found this one a lot more fun to play, so I'm gonna put it in A tier. Those aren't the only FPS games I found though, this is Deadshot. This is a pretty simple shooter IO game similar to Krunker, but with less cartoony graphics. This game is a lot less polished than Krunker, but it's got a slide button. You can slide. The slide is fun. If I'm being totally honest, I enjoyed this more than Krunker, and I feel like I shouldn't have for some reason. Maybe peer pressure. It's going in B tier. We're not done though, next up is Shell Shockers. This is another shooter, but they're trying to appeal to me. You play as eggs, you shoot eggs, everything is eggs, how great is that? Well, as it turns out, not so great. This game sucks. This game has nothing unique about it other than it's egg themed. Also, when I die in the game, it forces me to wait an extra five seconds to respawn because I have an ad block. And I don't even have it on. I don't have an ad block active right now. On a good day, I'd give the C tier. Now we got a side-scrolling shooter game, Ninja.io. Uh, yeah, I've played like five games of this and I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. Maybe this game is fun, but I really don't feel like putting in the effort to find out. I think I'll put this in the... I don't get it tier. Alright, we got one more shooter game, I promise. Gats.io. This is a top-down shooter game and, uh... Yeah, it's just really mediocre. I mean, it's fine, I guess. But no, it sucks. This is going in F tier. Next up on the list, we got an important one. Rotor.io. This is the cult classic IO game. It was a fairly small game with a small community, but the players who did play it often lauded it as the best IO game. It had a very engaged community with frequent updates and events until it was taken down due to high expenses. Now I got a secret for you guys. I was one of the people who played this game, and man, it was special. So, I, I know none of you have played this, but I'm going to put this in S tier. Next up, we got Starve.io. This is a survival game, and it's actually got quite a lot of stuff in it. You gotta keep track of your hunger, your thirst, not freezing to death, not being eaten by a random rabbit animal. And it's pretty complex, like an hour into playing, I sort of got it. But honestly, after I died on my longest game, I just gave up. I'm sure this game gets better with more time invested, but I really don't feel like investing that time. This game just didn't hook me like that. To be honest, this game's a little bit too intricate for what I want out of an IO game, but it's solid, so I'll give it a C tier. And another thing with Starvio is that I just didn't run into that many other players, but a game I didn't have that problem with is Moomoo.io. Moomoo.io is a civilization building game where, similar to Starvio, you build stuff, but there isn't really that much pressure on you to survive, you're more so just trying to rank up and collect resources to get to a new civilizational level. In the world, you can also find other players trying to collect resources, and you can actually join up with them and make factions. This game encourages playing with other players as your allies quite a bit. Now what really makes this game unique is that as you collect resources, you unlock different ages. As you do, you pick different things like upgrades, weapons, and structures. I find this whole process pretty fun, and the variety of ways to play is good. For example, in my last game, I played as a guy who had a crossbow and I unlocked a teleporter, so I would just teleport around the map sniping random players and it was pretty fun. 
I really like what this game has to offer, I sort of just wish it had more content. You stop unlocking stuff after age 8 and it gets a little duller after that. Still though, it's a good game, I'm gonna give it B tier. Next up is another game that involves resource collection, but it's a lot different. It's called Yorg.io. In this game you collect gems, which you can use to upgrade tons of things like resource collection buildings, production buildings, and defense buildings. You're gonna need those defense buildings because every night there's zombies that come and try to kill you and attack your base. And if the zombies destroy the center of your village, it's over. There's pretty much no multiplayer in this game, this is basically a single player game. It might as well be something you download off Steam. That being said though, it's a really fun time waster. Although, I noticed it's really easy, but I did accidentally play the easy mode of the game, so let's try impossible mode. So, if you do want to play something hard, I guess this game can offer you that. Overall, I thought this game had a really great gameplay and it was pretty unique, so I'm going to put it in A tier. But enough of these complex games with all these mechanics and building and all this structures and investment and time investment. Let's just mow hay. Let's play Combines. In this game, you mow hay. And let me just say, this game perfectly executes that concept. Now for Lords.io. I only included this game because it's one of the first to come up when you look up IO games. So let's play it. Uh, uh. I guess it's not a terrible low effort game, but it does suck. Boring, and it's a worse version of what we've seen before. D tier. Now for EvaWars.io. This is one of the last games I found while researching, and I was quite surprised by this game. It's really simple, but really fun. You can level up, and as you do, the bigger your weapon becomes. Get hit, you die. You hit someone, they die. You basically just walk around looking for other players to one stroke duel, and this gameplay loop is actually pretty great. It is really hard to kill a bigger player who knows what they're doing, but due to the recharge time after you swing, it's not impossible. I really like this game. A tier. Stomp.io, this is a last minute addition. Uh, C tier? Territorial.io. This game simulates international warfare in the most simplistic way possible. Basically, you get points over time and you can use them to expand your nation, and the bigger it is, the faster you get those points. Most of the skill in this game is actually just choosing your starting location and having the finesse to know when and when not to attack someone. The annoying thing about this is that once you're in a bad position, it's basically impossible to recover. If you get attacked by someone, everyone else is going to attack you and take all your shit. That's just how it is. That being said, it does have solid mechanics, so I'm going to put it in B tier. Now for Taming IO. This game has a pretty similar progression system to Mumu with ages and stuff, but it feels a lot more developed. You also get an animal that you get to name and that fights alongside you. That's pretty neat. You can also tame animals that you find in the wild to get a new pet, so that's cool. Overall, I'd say this game combines the appeals of something like Moomoo where you're building a civilization with something like Starvio where you have to survive, so that's pretty cool. I'll give it an A tier. You remember when I said I might get back to Survivio? Well, this is why. If you want a similar experience, here's ZomsRoyal.io. This game really brings back the feel of Survivio, however, it's not a carbon copy. For example, this game is way more similar to Fortnite than Survivio. It's basically just 2D top-down Fortnite. For example, Survivio didn't have shield potions, however, this game just takes that right out of Fortnite. There are other differences between this and Survivio and this and Fortnite, but I feel like the best way to find those out are just to play it. If you really have a Survivio wish that you wanted to scratch, this game does it, so there you go. However, I don't think I can put this game in S tier because it's already been done before and this game doesn't really iterate much on Survivio. But the existence of ZombsRoyale.io implies the existence of another game, Zombs.io, without the Royale. And if you thought that, you'd be right, it does exist. <sighs> this is just a worse Mumu. And a much worse Yorgio. But it is better than Lord's IO, I'll give it that. Alright, now we're wrapping up the tier list, and I've saved the last for last. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, the last game is called The Last.io. Let's get into it. This is another game which revives the spirit of Survivio, but this is way more interesting to me. Instead of just guns, this game has a whole theme with medieval and magic weapons. The variety of weapons in this game is pretty great. You can get ranged weapons, melee weapons, throwable weapons, just a lot of different things. 
There's also quests you can do to get money, and you can spend that money on special cosmetics to make your character look cooler. Due to the more complex system of weapons and items, this game is a little bit harder to get into, but once you do, this is just a really fun game. And it has a pretty active player base, so whenever you hop into a match, you can expect like 50 to 70 people. In my opinion, this game not only recaptures the spirit of Survivio, but improves on it with a whole new concept. It's just really great. I'm putting this at the top of S tier. This is the best game on this list in my opinion. So there it is, the IO game tier list. Obviously I couldn't cover every single IO game ever made, but if there's some really big ones, there's some really fun ones that I missed, then you can tell me about those in the comments. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please like, please hit the subscribe button, hit the video button. I've got some cool things in the works this year. If you want, you can go down to the description and find this tier list yourself. I made it, so you know, there you go. Anyway, that's it. I'm out of here. Across the block with a smile on your face and your head on your cock! <laughs>